Big V TV, great to have you with us for a Friday night. I hope you've had a great working week. The weather's not too good around Melbourne. Steve and Craig are with me, and uh, I think we're in for a bit of a wet and wild weekend, which is great because basketball's an indoor sport, so I feel yeah, pretty comfortable. But some of the stadiums uh -oh. uh, still get a little moist uh -oh. at times. The old, the old drip in centre court halfway through the game. <laughs> Hopefully it's the one that's just off the sidelines. Yeah, it's sort of keep keep wiping and not have to worry about it. I've had some days in the past, uh, going back over the years now, thankfully they've fixed the roof out there at Warrandyte, but I remember <laughs> some days in uh, in years gone past where uh, the part of the coaching gig was uh, stepping out on the court every couple of minutes to uh, wipe up a spot on the floor. And that's floor, the most so. useful he's ever been on the sidelines. Yeah, just about actually, just about. Hey listen, some big games coming up, it's round eight this weekend, really looking forward to it. Straight off the bat, can we just, uh, big thumbs up, mm -hmm. big mention to uh, Casey, the Cavs, yep. who are going pink this weekend Correct. across all their teams. Yeah, for BCNA. Good on them. Well done. Beautiful. I know a lot of our clubs out there do some uh, wonderful work in the community, and uh, we try. Certainly, if we know the details, we'd like to mention it as much as we possibly can. But Casey's yep. been doing that for a number of years now. Mm -hmm. Do a wonderful job, raise a lot of money, so do the Cavs. Uh, we're right behind you this weekend. Hopefully the crowds out there as well are right behind you and raise some good money. So good luck with it all. Okay, Youth League 2 women. Um, here's all the games coming up this weekend. Uh, we're going to have a quick chat about Whittlesey and Blackburn at 6th versus 3rd. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, Whittlesey 2-2 uh, two and two at home, but uh, they've had two pretty honourable losses. They lost to Casey and Packenham, so I think they'd be very happy to go into Mill Park. Pretty confident. Obviously, Blackburn won three on the trot. Um, five of their first seven games have been at home. Yep. So this is probably the first time that they'll see a road trip uh, consecutively. Uh, now, Whittlesey is six, three, and four. Blackburn a third, five and two. This is a game that Whittlesey needs, Craig, just to absolutely make sure they're staying in touch. Yeah, there's a couple of There's them and Frankston at three and four. That's a fair jump to the rest of the competition. So this is a huge game for the middle, the middle pack of the, uh, the ladder. Any chance Whittlesey at home? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, are chance. you tipping them, Steve? Uh, are you with them? Are you going to step up? Yes. You are? Giving them a real hot crack. Straight out, Craig? Yeah. Blackburn. I'm going Blackburn as well. <laughs> Youth League 2 men. That's peer pressure. Yeah, no, <laughs> peer pressure. Youth League 2 men. Um, look, lots of good games. There always is every week. But we're going to have a quick look at Pakenham and Frankston uh, coming up this weekend. Uh, Pakenham are 7th at 6 and 2. Frankston are 5th at 6 and 3. Is that right? Does yeah, that so right? there's yeah, so the, the way the ladders work is yeah. that they they kind of expect that if you've got less games you're going to lose them. I don't know why. Right, it's okay. just how it works. But, but by the end of the season, it just, it goes, to show, it just goes to show how jam packed that middle section is. That there's teams that are six two, six three, and they're fielding spots between four and eight. I would have said it just goes to show that the ladder's stuffed. But anyway, <laughs> let's just go along yeah. the lines of uh, packing them in seventh at six and two, Frankston in fifth at six and three. Take us through a trade. <laughs> Uh, packing them on a five game winning streak led by Lee Belton at 18 points a game. Pretty efficient too yeah. this year. Uh, Frankston on a two game win streak. They've won five of their last six. It's going to be a red hot game. Uh, I think if you're looking at the actual records, it's probably third versus fourth. Yep. Um, but it's just a huge game in terms of getting home court for finals. It's really like. It's a cliche, but an eight-point game almost. Uh, Matty Burkic has been very good as well. He's going at 10 and 13 again. Yeah, that's right. Dub-dub uh, averages. I also like the look of Luke Dalcorn from the mm. Blues. He's averaging about 13 points a game as well. Packing them at home for me. Yeah, I'd expect so. Yeah, I'm happy to go there as well. Five-game win streak. Let's go to Youth League 1 women. Uh, now, this is a beauty coming up this weekend. There's all the games. Um, Fair bit of action. We're going to head down to Geelong. The Supercats take on Keelor Thunder. Geelong are third, six and two. Keelor up on top first, seven and one. This looks like a ripper. Four straight wins to Geelong. I think they're just finding their mojo right now. Uh, Jamie Crombie out there doing really well. 12 and a half points per game. Obviously led by Carly Sanders out Carol. there. Yes. I think this could be the big one for the Supercats to, to sort of get grab um, one of the top Team. You think Supercats can knock off Keelor? Big potential here. Craig? I think Keelor win fairly easily. Easily? I think they're, they're three zip on the road, by the yeah, way, Keelor. I think so they can win away from a class home. team. Easily. Keelor. We'll give us double digits. Double digits. Double digits. Okay, fair enough. Zoe Garth going at 13 points. Katie Byrne at uh, 12 and a half a game. Um, I think it's going to be very, very close. 
Uh, I do like Geelong on their home deck, mm. uh, but GQ has been very good this season, so haven't done a lot wrong. Let's go to Youth League One Men, and this is the clash we absolutely hang out for every time it rolls around. Get your passports out. Uh, especially if you're coming from Ballarat into Bendigo because chances are you won't get in or out unless you show your passport. No love lost. It is a massive, massive country affair. It is Bendigo v Ballarat. Bendigo 10th, 2 and 7. Ballarat 9th, 3 and 7. So in terms of finals aspirations, I'd I'd say <laughs> Eddie, this is a very, very important game and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Both teams started the season okay and then have won one of their last five. The, the, the notes here, Craig, uh, loser misses D the doesn't finals. Matter. I'd say who, who wrote that? that? Who, whose that's, opinion is that? I don't that was mine. Oh, I think there's massive repercussions. So whoever loses, yeah. done. I think you can write your own I think winner doesn't make finals, to be honest. But. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, so Jake Wilcox going at 16 points a game for Bendigo. Ballarat, uh, Amos Brooks at 13 points and just over nine rebounds. Zach Dunmore, uh, 13 points and over nine rebounds as well. They've both got their stars. Mm -hmm. But right now, and both trying to find some form, if this game is not the most red-hot contest in the competition this week, I will be very surprised. These two teams uh, get up for this one. I agree. I think there'd be fireworks on Bendigo's home floor. The Braves will be up and about. They obviously want to make sure that they hold home court advantage. Um, but as I said, massive repercussions of this. If you if you lose this, you, you're done. But Bendigo... Bending only one and three at home. Yeah, they've got to be better than that. Have to be better than that. You, you Bring, can't have that advantage and not not switch gears. Yeah. Bring your kitchen sinks because you'll be throwing everything at each other in this game. Who are you going for, Ballarat or Bendigo? I'm going for Bendigo. Ballarat yes, yet to win on the road, I, I think. Uh, you, you, yeah, okay. So uh, I'll go with Bendigo as well, <laughs> even though they're only one and three at home. I'm, I'm going to go the rat. I'm going to throw okay. a cat amongst the pigeons. I'm going to go. It'll be a beauty. Get out there and enjoy it. Molten VYC with thanks to uh, VYC women with thanks to Molten. I've only done that a million times before. Uh, this is, I agree. I mean, we talk about the biggest games of the in round big v. in Big V. This has got to be it. Uh, it is none of wadding. Uh, second at seven and two, taking on Altona first eight and one in the same conference. All the games for the weekend are there, but this is the standout. Both sides have some extremely talented players. The Spectres, obviously led by Sarah Slater and Keely Frawley. Um, I just love Altona's depth right now. Very good. Just getting it done. I think they've they've won six or seven in a row, and it's all led by players one through twelve. Yes. They absolutely share the load out of the game. Yeah, they get, they get everything uh, out of all their players, and that's a big credit to the coaching over there. Some, one of the best coaches in the league, I think. Oh, Randy. Anyway, Randy's been doing it for years now, and not only to have some superstars, don't they? Keely Frawling's been great. She's averaging a double-double. Sarah Slater's averaging a double-double on 46% shooting, 12 and 12. It's huge. This this game is is massive. None are on their home deck at the Graveyard, one of the best-named uh, courts in the competition, the Graveyard. Who are you going for? Uh, I'm tipping the Gators just to continue mm. to roll. I'll take Nana Wadding at home. Yeah, I've got a fair bit of love for Altona at the moment. Mm. They're doing very, very well. It's going to be a good game. Uh, VYC men with thanks to Moulton. Uh, now, these two teams have had some great clashes. There's all the games coming up this weekend. Uh, plenty on, but we're going to have a bit of a chat about Danny Nong and Nana Wadding. Danny Nong second in the Terra with uh, a 7-2 record. Nana Wadding uh, eighth with a 4-4 record. This is a very compact uh, conference. None of what he need to get a wriggle on, Steve. Well, I think this is probably a massive surprise to viewers that we want to touch on this game. Second against last in the same conference. Who's back, though? Well, for none of what he, mm. Remo Simanka Vicious stepped up onto the uh, score sheet last week. So his inclusion is massive for the Spectres side. He's starting this week, surely. Absolutely. Danny Nong, Danny Nong are an absolute uh, freight train right now. Five and one at home, three straight wins. Um, they put Killsyth to the sword fairly convincingly last week. That's huge. Yes. But um, if not, if none of Wadding don't win this game, which I don't think they will, I think it will certainly put them in good stead going forward because they'll put in a very good performance. How's Hopscotch going at the moment? Hopscotch? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Hopscotch? A potch potch. Oh, potch potch, sorry. How's he going Gee, at the moment? Gee, he's been on fire. a fair game last, last week and week before. Uh, he's going at 14 and 6.5, and but great athleticism and just... Really, a guy that can that can pay that when the defenses pay attention to other players, he can really kill them with cuts and gets out in transition. Mm, 
Uh, Remo is a huge in for another wadding, and they rattled home last year, and I'm probably expecting to do the same this year. I had a little bit of a whisper that they call him Hopscotch out there for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, who are you going for? I'm going for Danny Nong. I'm going Danny Nong at home there. Recent form's been very impressive. Yeah, you Craig. can't pick against Danny Nong. Let's go to Division 2 women. Um, a big game coming up. I, I really like this. It is the inner city battle. There's all the games for the weekend. But this is the inner city battle. Melbourne Uni v Collingwood. Melbourne Uni, top of the table, 6-1. and one. The All-Stars are third, 5-3. and three. Uh, It's going to be a very, very good matchup. I think it's going to come down to depth. Like, I know Collingwood, we've, we've spoken about Jada Bugs. They, they do have those players, two, three, four, and five, that can contribute. But something about Melbourne Uni, one through five, their starters, they step off, their bench comes on, they don't lose anything. I think they just continue to contribute in different ways, and the scoreboard just keeps ticking over. So you're going oh, Black Angels? Yeah, I'm firmly in Black Angels. How did, how did Jada Bugs do last week coming off her uh, Player of the Month for April? How did she do? Oh, didn't did she have a down the last one? It wasn't great, was it? I reckon. Uh, she shot one of six or something. I, like reckon, I reckon that Bugs' life is going to be on fire in this game. I think Melbourne Uni might be a step above them, though, overall. Why, Craig? As Steve's touched on before, they, I think they play 12 players, and they get, at, they get, I think, three points per game from every player, which doesn't sound like a crazy number, but if you're getting three points per game from all 12 players, and you've got your two stars, it's very hard to stop. Bugs life to drop 30 plus, Collingwood to get up. Okay. Let's go to Division 2 men, uh, heading out to Sherbrooke for our game of the week. Uh, they take on Craigie Burn. Now it's a big it's a big weekend for Craigie Burn. More on that in a moment. Sherbrooke a seventh, four and five. Craigie Burn a sixth, five and two. It's a very, very important game, especially for the Suns, mm. as they try to stay in touch with the top half. Yeah, they have a bit of a weird one. They're four and five and their percentage. Uh, points for points against is as good as teams with a couple more wins than them. Huge huge game for them in the middle pack, because top six make the finals in this league and the top five is nearly sewn up. So it's really a massive battle between a few teams going for that last spot in the finals. I think it's Packenham, Sherbrooke and Wallen battling it out. Uh, and for Craigieburn, they're jostling for seeding at the moment. There's a, it's real, that top five's almost set, but all of them are within touching distance of each other. So this is going to be a huge game for both teams. Sherby was good last week. They were. But you look at the Eagles, they're sitting at sixth and five and two. They haven't really done much wrong. Is this the, is this is this, the, uh, is this the ladder is this play the tricks old, again? This may be the, the old ladder, trick. ladder Okay. <sighs> I think Craigieburn will go into this game with a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. They don't, they're well and truly aware of what they've done leading up to this match. They'll go in with confidence. I think they'll take this. Do you believe that players get up for a for, milestone? For milestones? Do you think that happens? Absolutely. Well, I think in that case, I'm going Craigieburn because two of their favorite mm -hmm. sons uh, roll out this weekend for their 200th games. Can we say Jay and Blake Dickinson? Mm -hmm. Well done, fellas. Uh, they have been extraordinary for the Craigie Byrne uh, Basketball Association over the years. Um, well done, fellas. Uh, the Dickinson family, a big part of that club. So to Jay and Blake, have a ripper on the weekend. Your stars of the competition go out there and hopefully your team can get up and help you celebrate. Brilliant coincidence too that's obviously the two <laughs> same we're game. playing on the same, same game. game. <laughs> also, one started earlier, but there's some injuries throughout the career has uh, stunted that in terms of games played and are you doubting that it's actually there too much? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. It's no. just worked out that I'm just way. Saying are you doubting the great brilliant. administrators oh, out there? No, no, not at all. No, I'm just not saying it's brilliant that it happened to be coincidental that they're playing on the same day. It's They've brilliant. been planning it for some time. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon they might have rested a couple of games to lighten up. The family said, we're not making two trips out. Get this done. I like it. Um, I'm going to go Craigie Boone. Yes, I'm right. Yeah, I'll go Craigie Boone. Okay, fair enough. Let's go to Division 1 women, and this is always a big clash. There's the games coming up in Round 8, but this one always takes centre stage. It's two of the big country teams going head-to-head. -head. Down at the Bull, it's the Warnable uh, Mermaids, 4th, 6-3, and three, taking on Mildura Heat, who are flying at the moment. They're in first position, 8-1. and one. Well, Mr. Analysis over there actually had a really good stat surrounding uh, one of Warnable's players. Oh, here we go. It's not often I get a compliment. No, it's not. We'll go. What's the stat? <laughs> uh, no, Amy Wormald's been in foul trouble a few times this year already. She's fouled out three times. Can Mildura get her in foul trouble early again? Because if you get her off the floor in the first half, that's huge. I don't think Warnable can win if she plays under 30 minutes. Well, Wormald and Gassion go to each other. Yeah, go head to head. So it's going to be a great that, That's if. If Gassion can get a couple of cheapies early on her, mm. changes the whole complex of the game. So you're saying Amy, stay out of fair trouble. She'll be watching yeah. this. 
Stay out of foul trouble. Foul trouble. Uh, who do you think is going to win? <sighs> really tough one. I, th- I can't go past Mildura mm. at the moment. I'm pretty sure. I know their first eight of one, but certainly form team of the competition by some margin. Mm. Um, I think we've spoken about Alexis Gassi and Vanessa Power um, as a brilliant tandem, but it's sometimes those players underneath them as well, Georgia Main, Bronte Clark, mm-hmm. Michaela Del Castagna, all doing their bit, and that's what's making the heat so good right now. You know who I think is uh, the smoky in this game? Uh, Katie O'Keefe, Katie Davis, mm-hmm. who is a wonderful player. Um, played WNBL, was fantastic. She's just come back onto the floor and uh, is running around again, starting to find her feet. I think Katie Davis, uh, Katie O'Keefe, might be a um, a bit of a smoky in this game. Look out for her. She's due to uh, to bust out and have a big one. You said before the Youth Champ Women game was the best game of the round in Big V. I think Ooh. this one might be. Ooh. Um, all right, who are you going for? I think you can't go past Mildura. Can't go past Mildura, Steve. I'm in the heat camp. Um, Although. Not as much as I usually would, just because of the road factor. And oh. The Ark is a great place to fly. Do they do they drive or fly though? Is it a road trip or? They always drive, mate. They always drive. Do you know? I'm going to go Mildura as well, and it's got nothing to do with Vanessa Power, Alexis Gassion, or any other place. Do you know why I'm going Mildura? Do you know why? Why well, no, Because James me, yeah. Madigan's a bloody good bloke. That's why. Uh, I'm back in the coaching to win that game. There you go. Beautiful. One for the coaches. Good luck to uh, to James. So you're saying uh, that the coaching you... staff at yeah, Warnable's not Louis, Louis <laughs> that's what you're just no good? At. No, Louis oh, Brown's a very That's what you just said. Okay. Very good coach. Uh, it's going to be close <laughs> either way. Division One men. Uh, it's been a ripping competition this season. Here's the game we've picked out, and it should be a beauty because it features. Dylan Travis going head to head with Corey Standerfer. Western Port Steelers are in fourth, six and two. Chelsea are in third, seven and three. Two of the best players in the league shaping up. It will be worth the entry price plus more. Yeah, Dylan going at 30, 10 and five. Standerfer 25, 11 and seven. They both do it on both ends of the floor. They can do whatever their teams need. And I think we'll probably see them guard each other for a Surely fair bit they of this go game. to each other. Surely. Because uh, I did see Corey wanted to guard Manny mm. la- last week when they played Collingwood. So I think he really wants to guard the best player on the opposition. And I don't think Dylan's going to back down either. Well, I think uh, uh, during the week yesterday, last night, um, I said uh, Dylan Travis, my number one choice at the moment for MVP. Yeah. You went with Corey mm-hmm. Standerfer. So here we yeah. go. Well, this game's short and simple, obviously. Travis, Standerfer both putting up fantastic numbers. I think the other one just off that uh, matchup is Stewie Tyrrell. Um, his field goal shooting's been brilliant uh, through this season. Hasn't shot the ball a lot, but at 58% from the field and 58 or 9% yeah. from three point range, he can impact games really, really quickly. Uh, the only person in the world that I know who was born with tattoos, Stewie Tyrrell. <laughs> the only person I know. Uh, who are you going for? Chelsea. Of course you are. Who are you going for? Less than Port. I'm on the. I hey, am, hang on. I hang am on. on the Dylan hang Travis on. bandwagon. Hang on. You can't say I pick Chelsea. Of course you are. When Mr. Chelsea over there picked Western Port. Are you Mr. Chelsea? Is that I official? Mean, oh, I think I'm a big fan of Chelsea just because you count them off so much. So I like going oh, against I? you. Well, you said they couldn't win because they don't have enough depth. I don't believe that they'll win the title yeah. this year because. I, I, I pick Western Port. I'm actually agreeing with you in this okay, game. I think right, at home. I picked Dylan Travis as my MVP as well. Yes, all right. Don't need to uh, suck up to me. Uh, State champ women. Um, I don't know why you've picked this game, but I'm going to let you take it away, Steve, because you've picked this game as the game of the round. There's a few others that are right up there, by the way. Yeah, Keelor travelled to Bulleen, and I think for an 0-8 side, the the pressure is on the Boomers here. These, these two teams have had two wins out of seven uh, out of 15 games between them. Yes. This could be one of the only times that the Boomers go in as a perceived favourite to, to, a, to a game this season. They're the best 0-8 side I think I've ever seen. Can you? Whoa, that's a big call. Can you tell me what other games we've are got, coming up this weekend? Just the first game I saw and thought of. Yeah. We've got Ringwood versus Southern Penn. The first game on the fixture. Yeah, but this game's your game of the week. Bulleen 0-8 in 10th. Knox Eltham. Knox Eltham. Knox Eltham. Who else? But, uh, you know, Hume City and Waverley's a good game. How did this get game of the round, Steve? Because I'm putting the pressure <laughs> He's a on the kid. I think I, we're showing... We're, we're it's now the time to turn this around. I want to know, pressure is on... You've added pieces in round one, yes. three, five, and seven. They've got a strong lineup. 
Now's the time to put it all together. Last year's grand finalists. Exactly. They won't make the finals this year, Steve-O. Zero no, and eight, they no. won't make it. They don't so have to make the done. finals. They've just got to turn this form around. Oh, who are you going for? The Boomers. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> oh, Kilo. I think Kilo are showing they're young a much guns. better team this year. Young guns. You're not getting behind the young guns out there at Kilo? Uh, not on no, this occasion. Clearly not. Kilo are two and five, but their points for and against are pretty much identical. Yes. I think they've had a tough start to the season. Young, for Kilo. Yeah, I'm going Easy. Kilo as well. I don't Kilo. think it's particularly close either. Oh, <laughs> game of the round. State champion. <laughs> the Boomers will win by double digits. State oh. champion. Who do you say is playing in the first game? Ringwood, Ringwood and Southern, Southern Penn. Penn. Don't even get a mention. Wow. Um, Five and two versus six and two. They just did twice. State, that's right. State <laughs> champ, men. Uh, you've picked two games. It's a big round coming He's got a Justin State Nelson and you've picked too many games. Oh, he's picked two games here, but he's done it with a purpose because Steve Chalmers is officially applying the blowtorch to the Hume City Broncos. Correct. Sitting in ninth, three and five, have some great pieces down there at Broadie. They do. They've got two. Mike Rose, Lee Jecker, Trevon Clayton, Luke Egan. Got Don't forget talent. Lukey boy. Two key games coming up this weekend. <clears throat> at home to Werribee on the road. I agree with this. To Blackbird. Yeah, did you? These are, and we've seen it in years past, these are two crucial games for Hume City to turn their form around. They're three and five at the they moment. They can get back to five and five make something of their season. Yes. They're and, one and four at home. And in uh, previous seasons, yeah. these are the ones they drop. This is a very good thing that you're pointing out, Steve. I, I actually agree with this. I think that it is a season-defining weekend for the Broncos, Craig. Yep. Jeez, you have the top-end talent. They should really just win both of these, I think. Uh, Werribee's a good team. Blackburn's a good team. I've seen both of these teams, Werribee and Blackburn, the last couple of weeks, and I've got to tell you, they are very, very good. You just gone straight out. Hume City will win I, both. I think if you're going off their talent levels, I think Hume City are the uh, a much better team than their record is showing right now. They need it, but they need to put it together. Well, I want to know who from Hume City goes to Connacoola. I think the you say Werribee and Blackburn are really good teams. I completely agree. The unfortunate thing for those two teams are is that the competition is so tight and the 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 top teams just have that class about them. So I don't want to smack. Werribee or Blackburn, that and you know they're eighth and tenth respectively. Hume City have a little bit of class about them, and they have the potential to show that. That's why these games are so important. If Hume lose both, finals aspirations done. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what happens here? Win both. Hume City will win both games. Yeah. I think they. Split and they go to four and six. I think they split as well. I think they'll get which one, one on the weekend. Which one do they win? Uh, I think they may get Blackburn. So um, lose at home again. I think that Werribee might get them. That would make that would make them one and five at home, yeah. which is well, you got to win not home, great. I, I agree with you, Steve. This is very good. Blowtorches on Hume City. He's this agreed week. with me the last time. I like agreed with you. No, this I'm softening. I'm softening up. It's round eight of the season. Go out there and enjoy the weekend. Good luck to all teams. It's going to be a very very uh, big round of games and by the look of the weather being indoors might be the place to be we'll be back on Monday night look forward to catching up with you then have a great weekend bye bye for now